Hi folks, it's going to be another senior moment. Uh, I'm going to show you, this is, uh, most of you probably know, this is a base that I designed for the little, uh, for palm routers, so that you don't have to hold them like this when you're doing routing, especially when you're doing carving. And I'm going to, uh, this video is going to, I'm going to show you from start to finish uh, exactly how I make this, how I put it together. So I just thought I've had a lot of, a lot of requests for that, so I thought I would just show you that. So I'll be off camera for a minute, and then we'll set up at the, uh, we'll set up at the computer and the laser, and I'll show you how I do the laser operation first. Okay, now we're at my computer, but before I do that, I want to show you my my new apron. I got this from from Stephanie and Andy Littleton. They made this for me. They were here at our seminar. They made this shop apron for me, and this is so neat. Uh, it's just great. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wear it for this whole presentation. Just wanted to give them a little shout out on it. Thank you, Stephanie and Andy. So let's switch over here to my computer, uh, and here's my screen. I got a I got a special wide screen on my computer just because I like it. Uh, it costs a little bit more. So now here, uh, <coughs> can you uh, kind of... I'm not sure whether the lighting because of the difference, but I, yeah. I yeah, see if you can get in on this. Now this is a single. I have a, I have a multiple. I have one file where I have multiples of this, but since I'm going to do just one, uh, I want to show you this one. <coughs> so can you see this all right, son? I can, yeah. Okay, now <coughs> this is, is Corel Draw, and this is the file, uh, the program that I use for most of the stuff that I design in my computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I hit Control P, which is a, <coughs> is a, a command for print. Now I have, uh, because of what I do, I have certain configuration that I have. So all of these settings in this file, all of these settings are what I need in order to print this, in order to print and cut on this piece of plastic. So Okay, so this is the, just to make sure, this is a computer program that drives the laser. This is a computer program that drives the laser. And the lines, I've got, a, I've got a command in there for it to cut. And on the lettering, I've got a command in there for it to what they call raster, which is like kind of like printing on plastic. So we'll shut this off. I'm, I've already sent the job over to the, to the laser. We'll shut this off. Then we'll take the camera over to the laser, and I'll show you how I set that up. Okay, folks, going to show you the laser first. If you got an extra 20 grand laying around, you can get one of these. So this is the laser that I use for the stuff that I do. We have other lasers, but this is uh, this is my baby. This is what I use. It's a 75 watt with a 24 by 18 bed, and it's made by Epilog, which is made here in the in the, <coughs> in the United States. It's not water cooled; it's air cooled. So it's. Uh, so and here uh, are you are you zoomed in on I my? Think so yeah, I, I'm good. Okay. Do what you do. I'll All right. Now you. here's here's a sheet of the quarter inch acrylic. Now I always take one of the uh, one of the pieces of paper off before I get started. So I put it in like that. And then on the controls, I have I can <coughs> I can turn the controls off. So that, are you, can you zoom in on yeah, this? Yeah, I'll zoom in on that. So you can see that red dot pointer in there. Hang on. Is there a red dot? Oh, there is on the plastic right there. Yeah, it's on the now plastic. I see it. yeah. So what I do is I set that. I could just start it off because it would do, it would start off in the corner. But I usually use the red dot pointer. A lot of people don't, but I do. And once I get that in position, then I press another button so that it's now secured. So I've got, I've sent that job over that you saw me do. I sent that job over. So I'm going to close this lid. 
because it won't, the laser won't fire if this lid is not closed. And this is, I have, <clears throat> this has an air exhaust so that the smoke and the exhaust from the cutting or the rastering is exited, it's exhaustion outside. I have a, <clears throat> I have a, an exhaust fan outside. So everything is set to go now and all I got to do is press this button and it'll, it'll take off and start, so watch it. And what it's doing now, it does the rastering first. All of the printing it does first. And then after it does the printing, then it'll do all of the, all of the lines or the cutting. So and what's the, that called? That's called vectoring. Okay. When it's doing cutting, whether it's on wood or plastic, whatever, it's called vectoring. If it's doing engraving, it's called rastering. So it did the top. It did the top. It just, can you see this? Oh, I can now. It did the top, and now it's doing the bottom. So this is, and this is what it's doing. It's just about finished. It'll be done there in just a few seconds. We're getting a reflection off of, uh, I don't know, if off the window or, you know what, can you move that mirror that you've got set up here? Sure. That might be, that was the reflection I was getting. Okay. That's better. See, what it's doing now is it's doing the, doing the vectoring, cutting the lines. Cutting that middle hole out. It's cutting the center hole out. It's already cut some of the smaller holes that I'll show you later on uh, what they're for. And so far we're into it about a minute and a half. Now we're a minute and a half as far as the laser work is concerned, but it's considerably more than that when you think about what it took me to design it and how to make it. We've got a lot more to go on it before we're done with it. And each, each step of the way We'll take the camera to some place in the shop and I'll show you each thing that I do to get it ready for assembly. And then we'll come back in here after all of that is done and I'll show you how I assemble it. But as you can see now, it's going... Uh, and if I didn't know what this was, I would be fascinated by it. So don't pay any attention to that phone. Somebody will get it. Vicky will pick up the phone. Yeah, Vicky will get the phone. She's the boss. She's not filming today. I am. So yeah, Eric's, guys, doing, guys, Eric's guys, doing the filming today. Vicky's not doing the filming. You guys are stuck with me. Well, if you're going to have to be stuck with something, you might as well be stuck with my super son. You don't get no better than that. So as you can see, it's just about up to the point now where it started. And it'll be done another another 10 seconds. That plate will be ready to come out of there. So there's uh, something you know, while we're waiting. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, you know, we cut all of our layout letters out of birch and all that. But these lasers generally cut acrylic easier than they cut the birch. Yeah, they'll cut... Uh, They'll, they'll cut quarter inch thick acrylic like this is and what I do and because there's just a little residue on the letters I just take a rag and wipe them off so that I don't have to do them after it comes out and then when I pick it up then it's done so We'll shut it off now and we'll take it out to the other shop. Okay, now we're out, we're out to the shop. This is a, a table, a little, uh, little router table that I set up. What I do is on the front and the back and the hole, <clears throat> I just use this little, this little router bit you can see in this table. I use that just to knock the edge off of here. So I'm going to turn this on. It'll be a little noisy, but you'll see what it does. You ready, son? Yeah, do it. Okay. So what I do first...
I just go around it. I go around it a couple of times just to be sure that I got all the edge knocked off. And I don't do the center on the front. I do the center on the back. I'll show you. Looks like my hand, and I, normally I have air blowing across here, so all of these chips are blown away. But I didn't want to turn the air on and interfere with the sound on the video. So <clears throat> this is really what it is, and, and even though it looks like I'm getting my hands pretty close to this, I've done thousands of these, and even if I can touch this when it's running, as long as I don't push my finger down on the on the cutting edge, it doesn't doesn't hurt anything. So, and after I get this part done, then I turn it over. Can you swing around here and get this grizzly, son? I'll try. Okay, this is my grizzly flap sander. I'm going to turn it on. It's going to be a little it's noisy. A lot of noise. It's not too bad. It's actually pretty quiet. And all I do is I come in, because there's just a little bit on the paper on here, there's a little bit of a ridge. All I do is I come in and I just cut it and then I get the edges. I just I only do that on the back. I don't do it on the front because I don't want anything to interfere with the visibility on the front. So that's all I do on this part of it. And I'm <clears throat> now I'm going to take it over to my drill press operation and show you what I do from there. Okay, now we're at the point where I'm going to drill and put the put the holes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to counterbore these holes from the back. That is the side with the paper. Now, can you see this bit all right, son? Let me zoom in a little bit there. Yes. Okay. Now, this is the type of bit that I use. It's got a carbide inserts. It's got a quarter inch drill bit. And then it's got a carbide inserts and it's a square edge. So that's what I have. That's what I have set up in this drill press. Now, just recently, I put my glasses on. Just recently, the spring broke in my drill press, but it doesn't affect it. Doesn't affect the use of it all. I've got another drill press. I just haven't put it in operation so yet. So it's in the down position right it's now. It's in the down position because the spring broke. Yeah. But it doesn't. It really doesn't hurt anything. Now I'm going into this. I'm going into this 110 thousandths. Now I don't have. Uh, I don't have my micrometer here to show you. Are you able to get that, son? Yeah, I'm trying to sneak in. That's, that's okay. If you stay in that position, I can see it. See, this is, this is in there 110,000. It could be 120. It could be an eighth of an inch. But we don't, I don't want to take any more out of there than is necessary. Because if, in fact, after, <clears throat> after this gets on a router, if it drops, the thinner this is, the more fragile it would be. So I just go in 110 thousandths, and I do that just so that when I put the screw in, which I'll show you after this operation, I'll show you how I put the screws in. I just want to be sure that the screw head is going to clear when this when this paper is taken off and this is mounted on a router. I want to be sure this screw head doesn't stick up above this plastic to interfere with with the routing operation. So I'll go ahead and do these other holes. Now normally when you're working with a drill press, especially if you're drilling if you're drilling metal and you see you see chips come out like that, you want you don't ever want to touch those with your hand. Now when you're doing plastic, doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt anything at all. Because here's all you're dealing with is just plastic. It doesn't hurt anything at all if it if it comes out and hits your hand. I love doing this stuff. I should have made a video on this a long time ago. Show you guys how I make this 
some of the stuff that I design, I put I put a lot of time in it to get it designed, but I usually design it so that <clears throat> after I'm done with it, now see that's all there is to making this uh, to making this base. So the base is now ready to assemble <clears throat> and put the handles on, and then when I ship it out and you get it or whoever buys it, then these holes. The, the router base will go on the back here and the screws will go into these holes and hold a base on there. So we're going to shut so it that, off. This one is specific for the 611? Yeah, this router. is specific. You can see it if you can read this. Yeah, well, this, is, now. this is for the DWP 611 and the Porter Cable 450. Now I've got about, uh, about nine of them so far. There's about nine different palm routers that I've made these for. Some of them have three holes. Uh, some of them I made just blank. So that if you have a router that I don't make the one with a particular hole pattern, you can buy a blank and then use the housing on, on the router to, to mark the holes in a blank one and put your and put it on a router that I don't put it the base on a router that I don't make the base for so uh, so you can buy a blank or you can buy I think I got about eight or nine different ones that I've made it for that I've designed it for so we'll shut it off now and we'll go back into my desk okay now we're going into the assembly and here here's what I'm working with these are the screws and these are the these are the knobs or the handles that I put on and these are one of the spacers that I use. I use two different sizes. The diameter is the same, but the thickness is different. If you can see that. Yeah, I think so. Does that show up? I think so. Okay. So, here's, here's all I do in order to put it together. I take a screw, and I'm working from the back side. First of all, I put a label on it. And this label is just a suggestion <clears throat> that you that you attach the housing to the base before you take the paper off. So from that point, then I take one of the screws, I put it in there. I remember I told you about that going in 110 thousandths so that nothing touches that. If you if you rub something across there, it doesn't hit that edge. So then I have one of these spacers is an eighth of an inch thick. And then I use two spacers that are a quarter of an inch thick. And the nice thing about these spacers is I cut these out of the scrap that I have left over from making the bases on that 24 by, by 12 piece. <clears throat> Then I, after I get that ready, then I take this knob that has a 1024 threads in it. I use a drill. And I drill it almost, I tighten that almost where it's tight, but it's still a little bit loose, and I'll show you why. Then I do the same thing on the other side. One thin spacer, two thick spacers, then the handle. And I've done so many thousands of these that, you know, I know I make it look easy. And it is, it's, it's, it's sort of easy, it's not difficult. So this is to the point now where this is ready to be put together. Now in order to put it together, I always put on my, my left glove. And the, re the reason for that is because I can grip a little tighter, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now this is actually, even though it looks like water, this is acrylic glue, but it's water thin acrylic glue. And what I do, is it's got, it's, <clears throat> it's got a little hypodermic needle on there, and I just squirt a little bit at the base of that, and then I turn it just to be sure it gets 
completely uh, covered in there. Then I take my I take my my good old cobalt screwdriver and I hold it. The reason I use a glove is so I get a little a little good grip on there. And now that's on there. And because there's glue down in there, it ain't coming loose. Even if you took the screw out and took the handle off, that plastic would still be on there. So I do that on both sides. And that's a little ratchet screwdriver. Yeah, this is a ratchet screwdriver. It's a cobalt. Uh, since I started using cobalt tools, I really like them. That's, that's my favorite brand of tools. So normally I keep this in the refrigerator because it evaporates pretty quickly, but I had it out here just to show you on this video. So there, my friends, you have the completed base plate for the DWP611 DeWalt router or for the Porter Cable 450 router. These whole patterns are the same in both of them. So all you need to do is once you get this, you take the, the, old, <coughs> the old base off, put it on there, put the screws in, tighten the screws up, and you're ready to make a sign. So there you have complete directions and specifics on how I make these routed uh, base plates. So, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, it's, it's been a little bit longer senior moment than some of them, but it's what I do. Okay, guys, so here's, uh, here's the deal, because, and I, this is Eric, by the way. If you have specific questions on this, guys, email Dave directly, dave at davesigns.com, because if you put a, just a comment, and you can put comments in the, in the uh, comment section as well, but a lot of times, Dad, you don't see those. Right. Uh, uh, most of the time, if you have specific questions for Dad, be sure and email him directly, Dave at DaveSigns.com, because he might not see your comments on the channel itself. Yeah, and, and on the Dave Signs, it's D-A-V-E-S-I-G-N-S. -S. Don't put two S's in the middle. There's some guy over in Ventura, a guy named Dave Tilsner has a Dave Signs over there, but he has two S's in his. So mine is Dave at Dave signs.com so just be careful I will put that across the screen right now as, as we're talking yeah okay I'll put it across the screen so that yeah you know all you know all of that I'll, that, I'll do it I'll do all of that stuff I don't even know how to do that so anyway my friend that's uh that's my senior moment for this time we'll see you next time